Good morning everybody. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different than I normally do and I wanted to make a guide for you so that when you come to Indonesia you will have something to refer to that will help you through the process of ordering, uh, eating, and choosing where to eat specifically so that you're well fed on your journey and that you also get to try all of the great Indonesian cuisine that there is. Now first of all we need to talk about the difference between warungs and restaurants because this is a very important distinction. When you're driving around Indonesia, you will see a lot of warungs, which are essentially mom and pop shop food restaurants. And they have a special place in Indonesian tax code where they don't need to charge tax and don't need to pay tax to the government because they are such a small business. Uh, so the food there is generally cheaper. Beyond that, it's usually more traditional and also better in my opinion because it is what everyone here that lives here is eating. And the other side of that are restaurants. And these are the type of establishments that you're used to eating in. The difference is, is that restaurants are always going to be a nice atmosphere and they will be more expensive. Uh, but that being said, you can absolutely find warungs that are extremely nice buildings, have great kitchens and are very clean and in my opinion, you are much better off going and finding a great warung than you are going to a restaurant. The most interesting thing about warungs is that they come in all shapes and sizes. The very first warung that I ever ate at was a hand cart that this guy kind of pushed down the street. Um, and I've had everything from that all the way up to restaurant style where you would not be able to tell the difference between it and the restaurant next door. If you're willing to go look, you will find great food very inexpensively at Warungs, and I highly recommend you go explore as many as you possibly can. There are things to look out for when you are exploring Warungs. I have left one Warung in my experience in Indonesia, and the reason for that was that there was a live rooster walking around the kitchen, and I felt like that probably wasn't a good sign of the hygiene of that establishment. So I left, and I found another great one right next door, and I had a great meal there. So there is a little bit of a, a looking around aspect to eating at Warungs, but I highly recommend them because they make great, great food, and you get to try the traditional food as it would be eaten by everyone that lives here. Okay, so now for the basic, basic terminology that will help you order anywhere in Indonesia and get a good meal no matter what, even if the person speaks not a word of English, there are a couple key terms that you need to know. Nasi is rice. Nasi puti is steamed rice. Mi is noodles. Soto is soup. Ayam is chicken. And then from there you have a couple different ways of preparing these dishes. Goreng is essentially fried. So if you see ayam goreng, that's fried chicken. Nasi goreng, fried rice. Mi goreng, fried noodles. And then from there you can add everything together. So you get nasi goreng ayam, which is fried rice with chicken. Mi goreng ayam, which is fried noodle with chicken. Soto ayam, which is chicken soup. Well the rain started to pick up, so I am going to go seek some shelter. But with those words that I just taught you, you are able to order and get good food no matter what, even if the person speaks no English. And here are a couple good safe dishes and they are ubiquitous everywhere, everywhere will have them. Uh, nasi goreng, mi goreng, soto ayam, sate ayam, which is uh, kind of a grilled barbecued chicken on a stick. And as far as vegetables go, that is kind of a tougher thing to find. But one dish that I've seen pretty much everywhere is called kapke, and it is kind of boiled vegetables, usually with chicken in a broth and uh, it is a very good thing to get. All right, now let's head to go get some food. Okay, so I'm just getting some breakfast now and depending on where you are in Indonesia, you can get a variety of different things. So uh, if you're in a more touristy area, you can get kind of a Western breakfast uh, with scrambled eggs and toast and all of that. Um, or a very common thing is the Australian breakfast, which is uh, either scrambled eggs or fried eggs, I believe, and then it comes with two sausages, toast, and then sometimes bacon, but that is a very good option because it's very filling. 
And then if you're looking for a more traditional Indonesian breakfast, you have uh, your regular dishes, nasi goreng and mie goreng, uh, breakfast style, which is with eggs rather than chicken or something like that. So those are always an option and they are much different than the uh, lunch and dinner time dish versions of those dishes and they are still good. Um, I just try and switch it up and not have rice and noodles all the time. So I try and go with more of a Western breakfast generally, but it all depends on the situation and where you are. Well, I am waiting out the rain because on the motorbike, it is uh, pretty tough to ride through it, especially with the big droplets here. But now is the perfect time to talk about convenience stores because they are key to my success in uh, Indonesia and I go to them pretty often because they're everywhere and you can get you know, a bottle of water or, or uh, soap or food or whatever you need there because they have a ton of different stuff. My personal favorite thing to get is the adult juice box and uh, they're about 7,000 rupiah which is uh, maybe 50 cents. So they are really, really excellent bang for your buck. The two major types of convenience store are Alpha Mart and Indo Maret, market without the K. They're both pretty much the same, but some of them have ATMs, others do not, and they all kind of have a pared down grocery store selection, so you can get everything from laundry detergent to a pack of gum and cigarettes and whatever you need, so they are actually really, really helpful because supermarkets are kind of few and far between. So these are kind of the the place to go and buy things. You can get maybe five items of really good value for 25,000 rupees, so like two dollars. It is really an excellent way to spend your money and get food and drinks and all of that. So definitely check these places out. Also, they have covered parking, which you can see here. So when it's raining, like it is right now, you can just come park your motorbike in a dry place, hang out, get a drink, and wait for the storm to pass. Well, I hope you can hear me over the rain. It is crazy out there. I'm soaking wet, but I've ordered mie goreng ayam. And with this one, it came with a fried egg on top, fried noodles, and chicken satay. And you get assorted vegetables on the side, which are always delicious. And you usually get some shrimp chips, which are pretty good. But this is a delicious meal, and it can cost anywhere from 10,000 to about 40 or 50,000 rupiah. And for dinner, I'm gonna have the ayam taliwang, which is a local dish to Lombok and my personal favorite dish that I've had in Indonesia, period. It's a chicken breast cooked uh, with this red pepper sauce that they make here and it is a local secret and it is fantastic. Comes with uh, nasi puti, which is steamed rice and some vegetables on the side. Other than food to drink in Indonesia, there are a couple things to know. Air is the term for water. Kopi is the term for coffee. And if you want a beer, you gotta get a bintang. Other than that, there are many juices to choose from and they all have the English version of the fruit that they're juicing, so there's no problem there. And from there, you are good to go. You are ready to eat in Indonesia and basically get out there and go explore some warungs and try as much food as you possibly can and just be adventurous about it because you will be all right. It's not sketchy and uh, the food is delicious. So have a good time, enjoy your food.